Before we start, we'd like to begin with uh, acknowledging that the land on which we gather is occupied, seized, ancestral land, and I am joining you all from the traditional land of the Ohlone people, also known as Oakland, California. And I recognize that these people cared for and stewarded this land for generations prior to our arrival. And we call to attention to the history of the United States and the state of which of California, um, in which California and the, of these people, sorry, Cal California towards these people through state sanctioned and state funded genocide, residential boarding schools and laws and courts that sought out to erase indigenous people altogether. We recognize how these systems and structures continue to impact and invisibilize indigenous peoples today. This history compels us to take action to interrupt the legacies of colonialism and genocide and calls us to take meaningful action, building authentic and mutual relationships with tribes and indigenous communities toward justice and sovereignty. Um, if you would like to learn more about how you could find information on which your, what ancestral land you're living on, um, you can find the um, information on the links in the chat that my colleague will drop soon. Okay, uh, Tessa, if you could share the screen for the next slide. Next slide. Thank you. So as we move along, we'd like to go over some housekeeping general rules. Um, we ask that folks stay on mute. Um, we also hope that you use a Q&A function and or ask us questions in the chat. Um, we will be monitoring and answering these questions toward the end of the presentation. Um, this meeting is also being recorded and will be sent around after the meeting along with the presentation. Next slide, thank you. Um, we also would like to go over some community guidelines. Um, just first and foremost, be respectful in the comments. Um, and we will be removing folks who are intentionally being disruptive or inappropriate in the chat. Next slide. And lastly, uh, this is a disclaimer that this presentation is for informational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice. Thank you all so much. I will pass it along to my colleague, Angelina, to introduce herself and give us a quick overview of why we are here. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Angelina Corsani. My pronouns are she, they. Um, I have brown skin, brown eyes, and black hair. And I'm the Advancing Racial and Economic Justice Policy Advocate for the ACLU of San Diego and Imperial Counties. Thank you all so much for joining us. We're very excited for this webinar and to share with you all the launch of our free to learn, free to be advocacy toolkit. Our ACLU affiliates across the state of California started this project because we believe that every student deserves the freedom to learn and every student deserves the freedom to be themselves at school. That includes young people of all races, backgrounds, sexual orientations, and genders. Unfortunately, across the nation and across our state, we have been seeing attacks on education, on the curriculums that guide student learning, and on the environments our students live and grow in. A handful of extremist groups and politicians in other states have launched a nationwide effort to exclude certain students, whitewash history, and censor curriculum, all while pitting parents and communities against each other. Here in California, we do have some of the most robust statewide laws protecting the freedom of students to learn and be their authentic selves. But we all know that people power is essential. Parents and students are often the ones who hold our schools accountable and who push our schools to do more. That is why we created this toolkit and why we're here today. Our goal in creating this was to provide a wide range of resources for parents and students who are leading advocacy and organizing efforts in their school districts. Over the course of today's webinar, we'll go over the various resources included in the toolkit. We have a strategy guide, model resolutions, a candidate questionnaire, and a complaint guide. And ultimately, our hope is that you all will find these resources beneficial and utilize them as you continue the work you're doing in each of your schools. All of our schools should be places where youth can learn about themselves and others, where books by diverse authors are celebrated, where curriculum reflects the diversity of our students in our society, where classrooms are safe and welcoming, and where teachers and counselors are reliable sources of support. 
It is our responsibility to come together as a community and safeguard young people's freedom to learn and thrive. Thank you again for joining us today to protect the freedom to learn. And with that, I will pass it over to Jen. Thanks, Angelina. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jen Chow. I'm a staff attorney and the interim director of the ACLU of Northern California's Gender, Sexuality, and Reproductive Justice Project. Um, I have dark hair, light skin, um, and I'm wearing glasses. Um, I have the lucky role of providing some context for the problem that we're all um, trying to solve together on this call today. So since the start of the pandemic, California has seen a significant and rapid rise in attacks on the ability of students to thrive and be seen and welcomed at school. As Angelina mentioned, these attacks are part of a national politically driven movement focused on censoring honest and inclusive books and education, taking away supports for transgender and other 2S LGBTQ students, undermining freedom of expression and speech and putting up barriers to open and transparent government. These extremists have made no attempts to hide their goals as we can see from the many pages they've dedicated to this topic in Project 2025. Two years ago in California, we saw a wave of conservatives get elected to their local school boards on an agenda to promote regressive policies that undermine our hard fought state laws guaranteeing students the freedom to learn and be their authentic selves. And since then, we've seen a corresponding wave of school districts take up and pass book bans, forced outing policies, bans on student speech, and more. Um, on this slide is a map that we've created showing where school boards have considered or passed harmful policies or withdrawn their good policies. Um, this map, which will be available on our campaign website, is, is not necessarily intended to be a comprehensive accounting of school board actions and, and will continue to be a work in progress, but does provide a visual overview of the scope of the problem we're seeing in our state. California has some of the strongest laws in the country around inclusive and accurate education, but this has meant that most of the urgency and resources to fight back against these attacks have been focused on other states. Um, However, even though we have good state laws, as this map shows, we also have school districts that need to be held accountable to them. Um, we set the bar higher for our schools in California and we need our resources to reflect that. We know the opposition won't stop in November, no matter who wins in the White House. So we also need strategies and resources that will help us meet the moment of the upcoming election and prepare us for the work that needs to continue after the polls close. The good news is that momentum is on our side. Since that wave of conservative school board members swept California two years ago, six conservative school board members were recalled in just this year alone. And our hope is that the tools in this campaign will give you the resources and inspiration to seize this momentum and leverage our good state laws not just to fight back, but also to fight for our shared vision in California schools. Um, and with that, I'll hand the mic over to Anna to remind us about what rights we're fighting to uphold. Thanks, Jen. Good evening, everyone. My name is Anna Mendoza. I have brown skin and black curly hair, and I use she and her pronouns. And I'm the Education Equity Project Director at the ACLU of Southern California. This evening, I'm going to share information with you about students' rights related to our Free to Learn and Free to Be campaign. As a reminder, this Know Your Rights content is for informational purposes only and does not serve and shouldn't be interpreted as legal advice. Our ACLU Free to Learn and Free to Be campaign focuses on accurate and inclusive education in California public schools. For us, this means protecting students' rights to educational content that is inclusive of diverse groups including based on race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, and gender, among other characteristics. California law has long required school districts to use instructional materials that accurately portray the cultural and racial diversity of our society. That means that school districts or charter schools can't prevent a school's use of a textbook, instructional materials, school library book, curriculum, 
or other library source just because it includes a reference to diverse individuals or groups. So a school's refusal to use a book or instructional materials because they include references to people who are lesbian, gay, black, or Muslim, for example, is not allowed. Also, the US and California constitutions provide students with the right to access, with the right to share ideas and beliefs, including the right to receive information and knowledge, and this includes critical race theory. The reality is that K-12 schools do not typically teach history or other classes through a critical race lens. But if you want to study critical race theory as part of a class assignment, or if a teacher at your school is willing to teach it, your school district can't block your ability to access that information. On the next slide, we'll share a little bit more Know Your Rights content. So our ACLU Free to Learn and Free to Be campaign also focuses on protecting students' rights to attend schools that are safe, affirming, and welcoming learning environments for all students, including LGBTQ, Black, Indigenous, disabled, and immigrant students, students of color, and students of all religions. So your school must be a safe and welcoming place for all students, no matter who they are, so that everyone feels respected and included. To make sure that students feel respected and included, as of 2016, the California Healthy Youth Act, or CHIA as it's known, requires all California public schools to teach unbiased and medically accurate comprehensive sexual health and HIV prevention to their students at least twice, once in middle school and once in high school. If your school violates these rights, you can file a complaint. Please visit www.myschoolmyrights to learn more about your rights and how to file complaints. And I'll pass it to my colleague, Irene. Thank you, Ana. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Irene Rivera. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a senior policy advocate and organizer with the ACLU of Southern California. I'm also wearing a black shirt, uh, glasses, and I have uh, dark hair. I'm going to go over some tools and resources that we hope are helpful in your advocacy efforts within your school district. Uh, these tools were created for students and parents to reference, and by using these tools, we hope folks feel empowered to advocate for just policies that respect all voices within your school communities. Uh, next slide. So there are four major tools that we put together for folks. The first being a web page, which houses all the relevant materials related to this campaign plus uh, Know Your Rights content on various topics. Our second major tool is the toolkit, which is designed for California parents and students to take action locally, both to advance inclusive education policies um, and to fight against harmful policies. The third tool that we've created is a candidate questionnaire, which is a tool for groups or individuals to use to ask candidates where they stand on specific issues that affect students' freedom to learn and uh, freedom to be themselves. And then finally, um, our education complaint guide is a guide to understand how California law protects students' freedom to learn and be themselves. And in this guide, it includes how to file an education complaint, uh, who to file a complaint with, and a cheat sheet on California education laws. Next slide, please. Okay, so the webpage can be found on uh, myschoolmyrights.com slash free to learn. Uh, we'll also put the link in the chat for folks. You can also find it by going to the myschoolmyrights.com website and it will be under the resources section. And in the webpage, you'll be able to access all the content we're going over today. Um, there's a screenshot on the slide for folks just to get an idea of what some things look like. Um, but there's um, some additional resources on the web page that are meant specifically for teachers and school staff. There is guidance for your school districts that can be downloaded and shared with them if certain violations are happening. Um, and then I know there's a question about the map. So there is a map that my colleague um, mentioned earlier that shows where school districts 
that, that show school districts in the state where we've noticed issues with censorship, discrimination, and lack of transparency by school officials. So our hope is that this map is going to be continuously updated so it shows some of the more um, relevant or some of the more recent things. Next slide, please. All right. As for our toolkit, there are three main sections. The first section that you'll come across focuses on assessing how your school district is doing and if they are infringing on students' freedom to learn. So the second section, um, or the taking action section, provides a comprehensive strategy guide that is designed for parents and students to help them navigate the process of advocacy from organizing efforts to directly engaging with school officials. And specifically, this might include, um, you know, requesting meetings directly with school board members, spreading awareness, passing a model resolution, um, and filing formal complaints when necessary, and then among a few other things. And finally, in the toolkit, we also have uh, the resources section, which has a ton of uh, like a ton of resources that we hope support uh, folks' advocacy efforts. And some of these pieces include a messaging guide, which shares tips on how to communicate effectively about these issues. There is a storytelling guide um, that gives advice on sharing personal stories to make a stronger impact. Uh, sample board resolution, which you can also see on the right side of your screen. Um, that is a, the, the, rest of the sample board resolution is essentially a template for a resolution that folks can use and be adapted um, within their own school district. So the screenshot is just to give you an idea of some of the language that we've included there that folks can utilize if necessary. Um, and then finally, we have also re uh, included a ton of different other organ organizing toolkits and educational resources from other organizations working on these issues across California and around the country. So we try to include as much information and useful advocacy tools for folks that they can reference and um, use as needed, right? Because we know that in every region in the state, the needs might be different. So hopefully folks can pull different pieces of um, the different parts of this toolkit. Uh, and with that, I will pass it to Tessa. Hi everyone, good evening. Uh, my name is Tessa D'Arcangelo Ampersand. My pronouns are she, hers. I'm joining you from Sacramento. I have red hair um, and I'm sitting here in my office. Um, I am going to talk about the candidate questionnaire. Um, so we wanted to make sure to provide a resource that is relevant for the upcoming elections because more than ever, we are seeing candidates run for school board with the explicit intent to ban books, ban historically and scientifically accurate curriculum and student resources, attempt to minimize comprehensive sex education, introduce more police to campus, and impose policies and processes into the school district that harm students, and especially Black, Brown, and Indigenous students and their ability to learn. Um, so the election's coming up, I'm sure that hasn't passed to anyone at this point. We all know there will be an election in a few short weeks at this point. Um, so the candidate questionnaire is an organized way for you to pose explicit questions to candidates that get them on the record, demonstrate the differences in candidates for voters who might not be paying as much attention as you, and puts the safety and well-being of students at the forefront of the election and at the forefront of what the candidates are talking about. So the questionnaire has questions on curriculum, access to books and programming and um, sex ed, um, their stance on mental health providers on, on campus, um, their stance on school police and school safety, um, not outing students and questions on creating school board meetings that are actually accessible to teachers, students, and the public um, so that our school districts continue to be places where democracy can thrive. So the candidate questionnaire, this is a screenshot, just as an example of one question. Um, basically, there are three sections. The first section asks the candidate the specific question. Um, the second column asks why this matters and helps you or other people you are working with to understand 
why ask that question in the first place, what laws are behind it, um, and how it relates to the overall free to learn, free to be movement. And the third column provides specific things to look for in a candidate's response. So you know, is this a good response? What should I even be hearing as they're speaking so that I can know where they stand on these issues? Um, so for example, we have on the screen a question about making sure that candidates will provide honest, accurate, and, and inclusive lessons and textbooks to students. For why this matters, we provide information about the FAIR Act that requires schools to teach about the historical role and contributions of people of all genders and different ethnic, cultural, religious, and socioeconomic groups. And this is important because it helps you to know that there is a law that is backing your desire for your school to teach a fair and inclusive lesson. And then you can see in the good response column that the response should affirm a student's right to a welcoming, safe, and bias-free learning environment where students actually see themselves represented in the history and in the lessons that they are learning. Um, and then we have a few different ways that you can use this candidate questionnaire. So first, you and others can organize a candidate forum. You can be a nonpartisan group. The ACLU is a nonpartisan group, so we don't take positions on candidates, but we do still organize candidate forums. Um, and you just have to make sure to follow a few simple rules, like making sure that you send an invite to all the candidates and you give them an equal chance to speak. Um, forums are really great because they create a venue for people who care about the school board to ask questions and hear the answers from both questions from both candidates and really see their answers side by side and do their own comparison. Um, other groups might also be organizing a candidate forum already, and so you can attend that forum and ask these questions. Uh, another way that you can use the candidate questionnaire over the next couple of weeks is to attend events that the candidates themselves are hosting. A lot of times candidates will have meet and greets, they'll have a community coffee, a campaign event, and you can use the candidate questionnaire to ask these questions. Um, the purpose of them being out in the public is that the public gets to hear where they stand on different issues. So asking them these questions really puts you in front of different audiences that might not attend a forum. Um, and it gives uh, a chance to catch candidates in a more relaxed setting where they might reveal more of their position than if they had carefully prepared for a forum where they were going to be on stage. And finally, you can provide this questionnaire to groups that are going to be doing endorsements and you can ask them to use it when assessing candidates. So you might have a local newspaper editorial board, local Dem clubs, associations or unions, or groups that put together voter guides in your community that can use the questionnaire to directly ask candidates these questions or to review the candidate's campaign materials to assess where they stand and then make a more informed decision as they're endorsing candidates. I am now going to pass it over to Anna. Hello again. So as part of our free to learn and free to be campaign, we also developed an education complaint guide, which is also available on the My School, My Rights website. This guide is intended to help parents, students, and advocates better understand how to file an education related complaint when they believe a school or school district has violated a student's right to a safe, affirming, and inclusive education. Protecting this right also means sometimes having to advocate before a school board. So our campaign also includes information related to open government laws, meaning laws that require school boards to be accessible to the public, share what they're doing, and allow members of the public to provide public comment on matters related to the school district. The guide begins with steps you can follow to help you get ready for a complaint. It includes tips on how to document the incident that occurred that gives rise to your complaint, gather your evidence to support your complaint, how to identify the violation that occurred, how to identify the agency that you should send your complaint to, tips on how to submit your complaint, and what to do if you're not satisfied with the outcome of your complaint and wish to appeal. The complaint guide also has two more features. It includes a cheat sheet to California education laws and a chart to help you identify which agency to file your complaint with for the four major topics that we cover in this guide. And so we list those on the next slide. So the guide covers four major topics, accurate and inclusive curriculum, 
So this is what we talked about earlier when I talked about um, students' rights to fair um, and comprehensive and accurate curricula on a in a variety of different school subjects. Insufficient textbook or instructional materials. So when school boards take an action, such as pulling a book from a curricula, from a classroom, Brown Act and open government, and discrimination or harassment on the basis of a protected class. These are the four topics that our guide covers. The cheat sheet to California education laws breaks down various laws under each of these four topics. And the guide provides more information on what types of complaints you may wish to consider filing depending on the issue area. We cover major laws, so not every law. You can also ask your school board for its policies related to the issue that you're facing. And sometimes school board policies can be the basis of your complaint too. For purposes of this guide, we did not include school board policies, but there's a reminder that you can reach out to your school board to request them. Overall, this guide is intended to help students, parents, and advocates navigate the, co the complaint process step-by-step -step so that they can determine when to file complaints to help support students' rights to be themselves at school and to access fair and accurate curriculum. So at this point, we know that this is just an overview of the education complaint guide. But for those of you who would be interested in attending a webinar in the future that focuses on the education complaint guide, please let us know. We are either doing um, a poll at this point, um, or you can drop it in the chat if you would like a webinar in the future on this education complaint guide. Let us know on the poll and we go, we'll give folks um, half a minute to fill it out. Okay. We'll give folks another 10 seconds to let us know if you'd like a, a webinar on the education complaint guide. Great. So we're going to close it out. But right now, it seems like actually um, we have a good chunk of folks who would be interested in a webinar. So we'll follow up in the future. Please look out. Follow us on our socials for that information in the future. And I'll pass it to Graciela. Thank you, Ana. I think this is the time for me to pass it to our colleagues in San Diego. Um, I think this goes to Marilyn or Angelina. Thanks, Gracie. Uh, so folks in San Diego and Imperial counties, um, someone will be dropping a link in the chat so please fill out this forms to let us know how you'd like to plug in for campaigns like this in the future. Um, we're also, our Imperial Valley team also has a Chaya working group. Chaya is the Comprehensive Healthy Youth Act. Um, and you can collaborate with that working group to advocate for comprehensive sex education. We'd also love for folks to share their stories if you've witnessed or experienced school violations related to sex education, um, or if you're interested in hosting a Know Your Rights um, Chaya presentation in your community, um, please let us know. Our contacts are on the screen. Um, and again, please do fill out that form um, that was dropped in the chat. We would love to hear from you all. And I will pass it to Soka. Thank you. Um, so for SoCal, we have um, not too many actions, but I think the biggest one for us is uh, for the SoCal region, you know, encouraging folks to utilize the candidate questionnaire at a local candidate forum in your region. Um, and as was mentioned earlier, you might also consider organizing your own candidate forum or event, and you can frame it around some or all of the questions included in the questionnaire. And then we also have uh, an email that folks can utilize if, if you have any questions or concerns about issues in your happening in your local school district. So um, I can we can also post it in the chat right now. But hopefully 
Um, these are some ways that folks in the SoCal region can plug into this work. And I'll pass it to my NorCal colleagues. Thank you, Renee. So we know that there are a lot of folks in the meeting tonight, and um, I know that you all are ready to uh, participate in your organizing and um, get your community mobilized. So we wanna support you in those efforts. If you have a district up for election in your school board, we can help you use the candidate questionnaire to reach voters or host a house party. Um, we're also really excited to work with folks uh, to organize campaigns to pass an informative resolution that was mentioned earlier that affirms students' freedoms right to learn and freedoms right to be in uh, California schools. So if you're interested, please sign up using the form that will be dropped in the link and also respond to the email that we'll be sending out tomorrow following up um, the presentation. 